Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 45001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 611, generously called general, which falls under clause 6.1 actions to address risks and opportunities. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Okay, let's get started. Clause 611 general under actions to address risks and opportunities is the first clause in the planning section of ISO 45001. I know that the clause title of general doesn't really explain much. What on earth does a clause title general mean? To be honest, I don't know what the ISO 45001 technical committee were thinking when they named quite a few clauses throughout the standard as general. I can see that clauses called general are always the first clauses in a subclause section, which sort of explains it a bit, I guess. A general clause normally explains an overall expectation of what's coming up. Now, there are quite a few different elements to this subclause, so I will break them down into smaller chunks and explain each part as I go. This is an interesting clause as I think it's actually pulling everything that you've learned and applied in two previous clauses to now take action, do something about it, as well as looking forward to what you will learn in clauses that are still coming up in clause six. ISO 45001 isn't just all talk and no action. The subclause 611 starts off with stating that when planning for the OHS management system, the organization shall consider the issues referred to in 4.1, context, the requirements referred to in 4.2, interested parties, and 4.3, the scope of its OHS management system, and determine the risks and opportunities that need to be addressed. I want to reflect back on exactly what this statement is saying. What I do want to point out is that this is referring back to clause 4.1, understanding the organization and its context, clause 4.2, understanding the needs and expectations of workers and other interested parties, and clause 4.3, determining the scope of the OHS management system. Now, of course, before you can action any of these requirements, you should have implemented the requirements for clauses 4.1. 4.2 and 4.3. So you do have an understanding of the requirements identified. I've covered these in previous videos, so be sure to check these out on Atoll TV if you need a refresher. As a result of completing the requirements for clauses 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3, you will have identified risks and opportunities to the business and to the OHS management system. So now clause 611 wants you to recognize those risks and opportunities and put some actions in place to manage them. So to, as per the rest of this clause, give assurance that the OHS management system can achieve its intended outcomes, prevent or reduce undesired effects, and then finally achieve continual improvement. These actions we put in place are so we can improve our performance within the OHS management system and manage risks to mitigate any impacts, but also leverage the opportunities, all the while moving towards continual improvement. This clause then goes on to state that when determining the risks and opportunities for the OHS management system and its intended outcomes that need to be addressed, the organization shall take into account hazards, see clause 6121, OHS risks and other risks, C 
clause 6122. OH&S opportunities and other opportunities, take a look at clause 6123. And then also legal requirements and other requirements, that's clause 613. So this is now saying that not only will you have identified risks and opportunities as a result of the output from clauses 4.1 and 4.2, it is expected that you will identify more risks and opportunities as a result of working through the requirements of these clauses that you're yet to come across in the standard. Clauses that follow this one, which are, and I'll repeat them just for you, clause 6121, hazard identification, clause 6122, assessment of OH&S risks and other risks to the OH&S management system, clause 6123, assessment of OH&S opportunities and other opportunities for the OH&S management system. And then finally, clause 613, determination of legal requirements and other requirements. Now, I'm not going to go into the requirements of these clauses here, but you can certainly take a look on Atoll TV to find out what I have to say about each of these clauses. So all of these risks and opportunities that you identify as a result of actions from other clauses in ISO 45001 now need actions to address them. These actions may look like new processes, new equipment, training, new technology, setting objectives, putting on new team members or contractors. Whatever is needed to action these risks and opportunities will just be a part of your business and OH&S system. This clause then goes on to state that the organisation in its planning processes shall determine and assess the risks and opportunities that are relevant to the intended outcomes of the OH&S management system associated with changes in the organisation its processes or the OH&S management system. Now, remember that the higher risk should get the most attention from you. The opportunities that have the potential for the biggest growth or improvement of the system should also get the most attention from you. It is then stated in this clause that in the case of planned changes, permanent or temporary, this assessment shall be undertaken before the change is implemented. Then it refers to C813 and clause 813 is management of change. Be sure to check out clause 813 to understand the full picture for managing change in your OH&S system. The key thing that stands out to me in this section is that they are referring to permanent and temporary changes. So if your business or its activities do change, an assessment is to be undertaken before the change is implemented. This is proactive hazard identification and risk assessment. Mm. I wonder where we find this in ISO 45001. I know, clause 6121, hazard ID, clause 6122, assessment of OH&S risks and other risks to the OH&S management system, and never forget opportunities, which is in clause 6123, assessment of OH&S opportunities and other opportunities for the OH&S management system. Be sure to check those clauses out to find out more. Now, to finish off this clause, it is stated that the organisation shall maintain documented information on risks and opportunities and the processes and actions needed to determine and address its risks and opportunities to the extent necessary to have confidence that they are carried out as planned. Which leads me to ask the question, what would this look like in your OH&S management system? Now that I've broken this clause down, what are we actually looking for in this documented information requirement? I mentioned some of these actions earlier on as examples, which were new processes, new equipment, training, new technology, setting some objectives, putting on new team members or subcontractors, 
So as auditors, we would see these actions as documented or visible evidence as part of the audit. Now, is that normally all that you would see? To be honest, no. And what is quite common to see is a risk register of some description. The risks and opportunities identified as part of the output from clause four and clause six, all of the clauses referenced so far, could be documented in this risk register. And then a risk assessment completed in the register followed by the planned actions. I did mention a risk assessment earlier so that you could define the highest risks and the most productive opportunities to focus your time and effort on. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these actions in your own management system? Most importantly, keep it real. Follow a process that aligns most with how your business works currently. So thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.